Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part three of this Sony STR7065 receiver. We've pretty much taken care of all the uh, bugs that have gone wrong with this thing, with one exception, and that is if we come over here to the oscilloscope, we see that there is a channel imbalance. The right channel is slightly louder than the left. Not much, but it changes. with the amount of signal you put in. So the more signal you put in, the more the discrepancy there is. So we need to take a look at that. That looks like a gain problem. And we narrowed it down to the preamp by injecting a signal in previous videos directly into the power amp and it did not have that uh, issue. So let's take a look at the preamp design of this thing and try to gain some insight as to what the possible cause could be. So I realize that this is not the best scan uh, that you can get, but it's what I have. And essentially what they've got is they've got the volume control which fires into a unity gain buffer, that's the little transistor there. And then the output of that uh, goes through the balance control uh, and then to the input, uh, which through a capacitor uh, is pin 4. So, there's pin 4 for one channel, and bear with me here while I scroll down to the other one. And then pin 10, or no, it looks like pin 11. Again, it's hard to tell because of the fold over here on the schematic. Yeah, it looks like pin 11. Pin 11 is your input, so 4 and 11. So what we need to do first is scope out at 4 and 11 whether the signal is equal or not. And then if it is, then we need to look at uh, things like feedback. So the output pin on this section is obviously pin 13, which then goes through a uh, couple resistors and you've got a low pass uh, which is your 47 at 10, that's part of your feedback loop, then it goes through the 100K back to the input pin. So, I don't remember it being frequency dependent, so it's unlikely that there is a capacitor issue. I mean, it could be. I don't think there is. Let me see if I can scroll to the other side. Do some shake vision here. And I think that's... Yeah, the other side here. So we've got this output capacitor which is 3.3 .3 microfarad on pin 13 and then likewise up here it's pin 2. So 4 and 11 is input and 2 and 13 is output. And down here in preamp land uh, this is our CX 01462, yeah, 0462, that's our preamp IC. So we're going to take a look and see if uh, the signal is equal coming in. Alright, so this is going to be interesting because my camera mount just broke. So I've got it kind of propped up here where I can uh, better see it. Let's see if that helps us today. We're going to monitor. Uh, pin 4, 4 and 11 were our input pins. We're going to take a look at what size signal is headed inside. And so let's see here, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Should be seeing something there. Make sure I'm on the wrong, the right uh, input here. Two and eleven. All right. All right. So there's two. That's about two divisions. There's eleven. Two divisions. 
let me center this up so I know I'm about as precise as I can be here. And again, we're going to go with two. So just a hair shy two divisions. And 11, which is two divisions. Okay, so if you want to compare, we'll go, let's uh, disconnect this. Bear with me a moment here. And we'll line these up. Okay, so pin two is going to show up first. And then we're going to do pin 11 on top of it. All right, there we go. So right there, we have a channel disparity. And so it's occurring at the input to the preamplifier. So pin 11 is greater than pin 2. So let's look at some probabilities. And now we got to do that test over because I'm an idiot. And I was actually measuring 2 and 13, which are the output pins. So let's try that again. All right, I'm just not understanding how this is working because I'm getting signal at 12 and 13. Uh, but I'm getting nothing anywhere else. So obviously the circuit's working because, you know, we're getting output. And I'm getting strong output on, on pin 13 and 2 and 12 and 3. So, uh, it's not doesn't work the way I thought it went. Let's see. This is 0461. I'm not looking at 0465 or 462. Yeah. Okay, so that's 0461. And that's your phone preamp, but that's elsewhere, isn't it? See, this is our phono preamp. And that's all discrete. And then you've got the 0462 over here. So, uh, there must have been a revision change. Well, anyways... So what I have on my schematic does not really match what's here. I assume they're not too terribly different. But I see not a whole lot on the input pins. And these magical buffers, which are supposed to be here, these input buffers, I don't see. So, I mean, we can go back a little bit and we can look at the output signal here. I see it there, and I see it there. All right, so we're going to check up to that point and see if I can get any uh, differences there. Because if it's different going into the chip, it's going to be different coming out. So I guess this is like our little buffer stage here. And this is coming from the, uh, this blue wire to that is coming from the input selector. So let's check that real quick. So if we go back a stage and we look at the output of those previous two capacitors, we see that the discrepancy is there. If I go a stage before that, we see that the discrepancy is still there. So let's go to the input cable there. So now I'm clamped on to this blue cable, which goes over to the uh, mode selector switch. So there's that. It's going right over to the mode selector switch there. So the signal coming out of the switch is not symmetrical.
but there's nothing before the switch. The switch just goes to the jack. So is there loss in the switch? Or is there loss at the input? Like there's different loading at the input. That could be interesting. Because I'm literally reading right off the output of the selector switch. And we're still... We've got this little discrepancy here. So let me just make sure I'm laid down on top of each other. Yeah, we've still got a tiny discrepancy. If we, and it's that right channel, that right channel is just a little bit louder. So let's measure the resistance between ground and the output of the selector switch and let's see if the loading's different. This has been a real fun morning because my meter display has, a section of it has stopped working. So it's gonna be a little bit trickier to read. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here to the left channel from ground. And it looks like Keeps creeping up. 25. 25.95 uh, K input. Let's go to the right side. 25.99.26. So that's, that's pretty close. So what's going on here? Why do we still have this channel discrepancy? It's just really freaking weird. It's going to bug me. All right, so I, I checked all the ESR and all the capacitors, and they're all good. And like I said, the discrepancy is occurring right at the output to the of the input selector switch. So uh, I'm not sure what to do about that. That's just a problem that exists. Um, so what I'm going to do is, since the right channel is a little bit hotter, I'm going to take... Uh, that right side and I'm going to pad it a little bit um, trying to think of where I could do that best probably at the balance control and just add the tiniest little bit of resistance uh, to pad that channel and you do it after the balance control because that way you've already got this stage here as your buffer then you don't change the impedance of it. So it's not going to affect the sound. It's really just affecting the input. It's like an input level attenuator. So I'm, I'm probably going to add that up here right at the balance control. Uh, and we'll just experiment until we get the channels balanced out at maximum volume and full gain. Uh, and then see if it tracks sufficiently through the volume control range. And the way we're going to work it is, you see the left channel is filling the four divisions there, and the right one is slightly over the top. So we're going to add some resistance to ground from the high side of the balance control for that channel to see if we can pad it a little bit and get it to uh, calm down and line up with the uh, left channel. All right, so adding uh, something at the balance, the uh, volume control really doesn't work all that well because it pisses off the input loading. So I'm actually, it's working better sticking it at the output of the input selector switch with that, that blue coax cable right there. And so if I attach the an 82K resistor, excuse the reflection there, to that right channel that's a little bit hotter, watch how it uh, drops. And so now we're matched up again. So off and on, off, you know, you see the difference there. So I'm going to pad that side. Let me get an alligator clip real quick. And with the alligator clip connected, we now have a an equal channel balance here. And this is being measured from the speaker output, so I know it's right. So we're good there. So if I turn the volume down and I turn the gain up, we're still equal in both of our channels. 
and just doing a frequency sweep here. You see that thing twitch? Look at that. I wonder if that's our amplifier problem coming back with something else going on. Maybe that 945 that I thought of earlier. But in any case, we have equal gain now, so that's good. Let me grab the freeze mist real quick. So let's separate them again. Come on. Yeah, so in separate mode, the twitch is still there. So it is power amp isolated. Let's spritz that 2SE 945 I was suspect of earlier. Nope, doesn't much care about that. And then let me peer down in here and see where that little gumdrop thermal diode is. It's hard to tell. But it's way down there. That little black dot that I'm trying to shine the light onto. Let's spritz that and see if it goes away. And it does. So the silly little thermal bias diode's got to go. And I bet you this amplifier was heating up real good. Yeah, big temperature difference. This one's getting toasty. So, that little thing has to go. Silly little bias diode. Okay, well, we got the gain problem solved. I'm going to solder that resistor into place. And then we're going to work on getting that stupid twitch, which is back again. See, when it warms up, it uh, goes back to being twitchy. But so far... We've almost got everything solved. But yeah, when that part heats up, it just gets twitchy. And then I can blast it with some freeze mist again. And problem goes bye-bye. So definitely an indicator of a thermal failure there. And now that we got the amp board up, I'll show you that that's the little bugger right there, the problematic guy. Uh, these have a tendency to open up. Uh, one over there. Behind, yeah, it's behind the capacitor. That one's there too. Um, I can't remember if they're single or multi-junction. But we're going to pull it out and see what it is and then see if we can replace it. Alright, so meter says it's a dual junction. Got my hand on it here. So we're going to be a little shaky because, again, camera mounts broke, so yay fun. Um, this doesn't couple any thermal feedback. It's not next to anything crucial, so I think just two 1N4148s in series is going to do me. So let's go ahead and tie two together and pop it back in. All right, so there she is. Mounted in the uh, driver board here, so we'll put this back together and fire it up and see if it blows up or not. All right, didn't blow up. So we're going to play the waiting game. I'm going to clean up a little bit, and we'll see if this goes back to being twitchy. Okay, so this has been running for about a half an hour now. No twitchy twitchy. Heat sinks are nice, even, warm temperature. Not hot. Very happy we have our nice uniform gain here. Makes me happy. And see down in here, there's the little resistor we tacked in at the output of the uh, input selector switch to the input buffer. So, this thing's uh, doing pretty good now. I think we've got all of our issues resolved. Let's see how much power it puts out, just out of curiosity. Should run it up to clipping here. Back it off a hair. All right. Let's see what we're getting for output here. And that's 24.14. Yeah, I got to call Fluke today and get another display for this thing. This kind of pisses me off. But uh, let's do some math. 
All right, so if we do the math, uh, it looks like 576, and then uh, 576 into an 8 ohm load. Uh, looks like uh, 72 watts per channel. So a little bit more than the 65 they claim it was, so that's good. But yeah, so this thing's like really happy. We resolved all the technical issues with it. So I'm going to bring part three to a close because we've resolved all the technical issues. Part four is going to be cleaning it up and just doing some light cleaning of the transformer, the heat sinks, taking the faceplate apart, replacing the dial lamps and stuff, and just uh, making it look nice. And let me show you the wonderful wood case it came with. And this is really what you don't see very often is the wood case. And it's got some light scratch marks here and there. It's got some scratching here and here. Uh, I think one or more of the slats, yep, the slats are loose, which is not uncommon. So we'll go through reattaching those. Um, but yeah, overall, it's, uh, it's in pretty nice shape couple scratches here and there but otherwise really good so definitely worth uh, fixing up so that's going to do it for part three today uh, I'm glad this one was kind of short and sweet so stay tuned for part four where we'll go through uh, cleaning this up and making it look nice but anyways thanks for watching the video more stuff to come